Tuesday Drive. Those vampire bats will give you a fright. Oh dear. Often uh, bats have been synonymous with vampires, Transylvania, and as you heard from that little song there, pinching apples from your tree. But there's also a lot we don't know about these little creatures. And across the Shellhaven, we have quite the population, so much so that we have our very own bat clinic in Bombardieri. But sadly, there's been a sudden loss of life. Now, joining me is Janine Davies, who is the manager of the Shellhaven Bat Clinic, and she joins me now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, Janine, firstly, look, do you think bats have become an unnecessary villain in popular culture? Yes, I I honestly (laughs) think that um, Hollywood has a lot to answer for. I mean, they're always depicted as being creepy, crawly, Mm. nasty, flying little creatures. Whereas that's um, really far from the truth. In the defence of that song, the uh, that was actually from the film My Little Ponies, and there yes. was a little pony, I think about uh, a minute and a half into the song, that backs up the bats and says, "You know what, Mr. Pony, they're actually not that bad." I just couldn't play the whole song, unfortunately. <laughs> now, Janine, I'm I'm curious to know what why are bats important to the environment? Well, firstly. Um our grey-headed flying foxes are listed as vulnerable to extinction federally. They are a keystone species. And what people don't realise is that they are our nighttime pollinators of a large number of eucalypt trees Mm -hmm. and they also disperse the seeds of native fruit trees as well. So without their pollination of, of those trees, those forests will cease to exist. So would it be fair to say that they are the bees of the night? They're known as the nighttime pollinator, yes. Yes, wow. Because, yes, because the bees are out during the day and with a number of the species of eucalypts, they flower of an evening. So the flying foxes have a role to actually pollinate those trees. Now, they travel up to 50 kilometres an evening looking for their food and their preferred source of food is the nectar from those eucalypt blossoms. If you were to, for example, offer them a bowl of exotic fruit salad or a bowl of blossom, they're going to go for the blossom every single time. Now, this might sound like a silly... I was was just sorry to interrupt you. um, You're talking about um, bats and flying foxes. Uh, So a flying fox is a bat? Flying foxes are classified as mega bats, whereas the small insect-eating Bats are called microbats, and there's you know quite a quite a large number of different species. So uh, the microbats will eat bugs, mosquitoes. You actually want them in your yard because they eat so many of the insects that people find annoying that they're a welcome addition to your property. Now, apparently, there's been a, a suspected mass starvation of flying foxes. Can you tell me a bit more about this? Okay, so at the moment we've been experiencing many deaths of babies, um, anywhere from a week up to three, four weeks old, where under the opinion of the fact that earlier on there were flying foxes in southern Queensland, northern New South Wales, where they're literally falling out of the sky. People were driving up the highway and saying that it was just littered with flying fox bodies and that was because they were starving. Members of the public were actually putting out fruit in their trees, which Mm. isn't something something that you want to encourage because everybody likes free food, but these little animals have been starving. So then on top of the drought, we've had all the the mass fires Mm. up north that are now moving down the coast. So we're wondering if it's the fact that they've been driven southward when they normally would be just coming down following the um, blossom as it is flowering. And if they've travelled long distances, perhaps it's the case where the mothers are malnourished, Mm. they're not producing the milk, and therefore the babies are just dropping off their mums. So you're not necessarily, you're not definitively saying that the fires have caused this mass starvation, but you're just merely suggesting that it it could be uh, a link between it. I would I would say mm. my personal opinion is that because of the drought and then the fires have decimated the forest, they're just travelling to find 
their food sources, mm. which is being depleted with deforestation and everything else. So it's just a, you know one step after another that seems to be um, affecting them at the moment. So is there anything that we can do here in the Shoalhaven to, uh, to help these little flying foxes out? Not at this point. Um, all I can ask is for if, if anybody sees any bat, whether it be a flying fox or a micro bat, in daylight hours to contact Wildlife Rescue South Coast. We have vaccinated carers and rescuers who can attend um, and assess the situation and take the animals into care if need be. What's the, what's the local population like for, for bats in our area? Is that relatively healthy? It fluctuates. Mm-hmm. Um, we did have approximately 15,000 maybe um, three weeks ago. It's now dropped down even more because, um, as you may have noticed, there's not much blossom here as well. Mm. So they will travel in search of food. We've probably only got about 700 down at the colony at the wow. moment. That's, so that's dropped off yeah. markedly. So I know you mentioned before there's not much we can do about you know to help these bats that are coming down from the north. But for our local for our local bats, is there anything that we can be doing to you know help sustain their life? Because I'm thinking along the lines of if if we were if to plant say um, fruit trees in our backyard, for example, does this help them out at all? You're better off planting natives, right? Native trees that are going to have blossom. You know various eucalypts, lily pilly. There's a, there's a large list of native fruit trees and blossom that you can plant that would be would benefit them, definitely. Okay. But well, those, those are something that's not going to happen immediately, no. unfortunately, because most of those trees take a while to, to grow. Well, what we might do, because we're going to pop this interview up on our Tuesday Drive Facebook page, is I might get a little list of those uh, natives that people might uh, like to plant in their backyard and hopefully... Um, we, we can plant some more around the area to help out those little... Definitely. Because they're so cute. I've seen some of the pictures, Janine. They're gorgeous. Oh, look, <laughs> um, people, a lot of people, we've been, we've been to many talks and so forth, and yep. you've had people there and they're going, oh, you know, bats, ugh, you know, that sort of yep, thing. Yep. And yet when they've, they've met Winston, who's our education flying fox, people come up afterwards and say, can I take a photo? I had no idea that they were so cute and intelligent and they are. They're, they're a remarkable creature. Um, they've just had bad press, bad mm. publicity. People just continually call them rodents, which mm. they're not. Mm. They're a placental mammal. You know, the, you've got an animal that a female's around seven, 800 grams. She has a six-month pregnancy. So, you know, they're... They're an amazing animal. They only have one baby on average per year. Wow. Basically because having two is would be rather difficult for them to actually fly because for the first three to four weeks, depending on their weight, bub stays attached to mum's nipple and wraps across her stomach and she flies with them. Now, if they were to have twins, that would make it twice as difficult. It, once they get to a stage where they're too heavy, mum plants the babies in a creche tree. Wow then goes out to feed, comes back and takes care of the baby. Now, Janine, unfortunately we're running out of time. I just wanted to uh, quickly ask you, can you tell me the story behind this uh, humidity crib that you guys have got? Where did it come from and what's it doing? Okay. When we get babies in, they need to have a constant um, heat. So we have a number of um, humidity cribs that we use. We were just desperate in the last two weeks because we just had so many animals coming in into care that we needed a place to put them. Careflight generously donated one of the ones that had gone out of commission that they could no longer use in the aircraft Mm -hmm. and that was something that was just absolutely amazing that they were able to donate that to us and as soon as we received it we plugged it in and it was in use within a couple of hours. So that just manages to keep their their temperatures at at, at the right height and therefore give them a better chance at recovering. Well, Janine, it's been an absolute uh, delight to uh, talk with you this afternoon and, and thank you for shedding some positive light on these beautiful creatures around our area. If we could just get everybody to, to realise that they are a keystone species, they are crucial to the environment. We will lose forests in the near future if they become extinct. Now, they were up until recently estimated to probably become extinct within 50 years. The rate they're declining with incidences such as this, I'd say that's going to be a lot less.
It's definitely food for thought, that's for sure. Right, thank you, thank you so much, Janine. You're welcome. That was Janine Davies from the Shellhaven Bat Clinic in uh, Bomondary. And uh, don't forget that uh, if you want to help them out, uh, perhaps you can uh, start planting some natives in your own backyard. And what have you seen some flying around? And if so, how many? I'd love to hear. Double four double two one zero four five. That's double four double two one zero four five. And if you also head to the Shellhaven Bat Clinic Facebook page, they have some absolutely gorgeous photos of these little creatures. And I know you're not supposed to take them home, and obviously I'm not suggesting that you do, but I guess in a parallel universe, they would be make the most gorgeous pets. But again, I'm not suggesting you do that at all. I don't want to get myself in trouble, but uh, they can certainly, um, certainly do with some help from us. Tuesday Drive.